Hey guys, picked up this the other what, other day, actually quite a while ago, um, a few months back, and uh, I haven't really used it that much because it's kind of really loud. Um, what is it? It's a, uh, a solder fume extractor. Uh, we've got the carbon filter here, we've, we pull that out, we've got a fan inside, on off switch, and the f you just sit it next to your, uh, your soldering and it sucks the fumes in, blows them out, out the way, but it, um, it's supposed to filter the, uh, the nasty stuff through that carbon filter. Um, like I said, it's too noisy, and so I don't really use it that much, and I, I want to start using it because I've got to look after my lungs, you know. So uh, I thought I'd uh, look at replacing the fan. Now, it's a 100-volt version, um, and I'm going to turn into a DC, like a 12-volt version, something like that. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a KM, model 491. Um, you, might, you might actually recognize this form factor if you've had a look at uh, the uh, solder fume extractors. It's actually a, um, a, a HACO. But it says KEM. If we flip it over, it actually says on the back, can we get it in there? Hacko KEM 491. Now, this is going to be a really, really old bit of kit. Part of the noise might just be the bearings drying out. Um, this definitely predates the uh, Hacko's, uh, was it blue and yellow Fisher Price color scheme? And it's probably 70s, um, early 80s, I guess. I'm not even sure. There's no date codes on it. It's just a fan in a box. So, nothing too complex. But. Like I said, it's noisy and I want to fix it. So let's uh, see how we can go about pulling this thing apart. And here we go. Turned out to be really easy. Once I got that rear duct off, there was just the four screws and it opens up. You can see there's not much inside already. Just a fan, uh, Centaur brand, CNJ55B5, 100 volts, 15, 30, uh, sorry, 15 to 13 watts, depending on if it's 50 or 60 hertz. Uh, not much else. It's a uh, Japan servo company. They still make fans. Uh, servo is still around. And um, it actually feels like it's not too bad condition. But we're going to get rid of it. It's a nice uh, aluminium frame. Which uh, a lot of uh, mains powered uh, fans actually are. So let's uh, get that out of the way. Because what I plan to do is I'm going to replace this fan with... This fan, Sanace 120, it's a 120 millimeter to match the old fan, and uh, Sanace is actually Sanyo. I bought this in a Kihabara, uh, very good, uh, very good brand. Sanyo Denki, Denki is actually Japanese for uh, electric, so it's Sanyo Electric. Uh, model, uh, what's it? 9G1212H402, so it's just a 12 volt, 120 mil fan, 0.31 amp, so it's uh, not too much current, and that's going to work quite nicely. These are actually very, very good fan. Cost me about five bucks in a Kihabara, so it's all good. So that's going to sit there like that, but it is thinner than the the, uh, the existing fan. So I'm going to have to uh, work out some spaces or something just to hold that in, because otherwise it's going to rattle around. Now, I want to do a speed control as well, so I'm going to figure that out. But I reckon what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this from a, a DC power pack, which I have here. This is actually a 19 volt. I think it's 19, or it might be 15. Uh, let's have a look. 15 volt. I went a high voltage because I'm going to do something a little bit tricky with a, uh, a speed control. Uh, to have the speed control, I'm going to need a slightly high voltage because, you know, regulation, all that sort of stuff. It's going to uh, drop down the uh, maximum voltage because nothing's perfect. It's going to be 98 or 95% efficient. We're going to lose some voltage in, in heat. So uh, by having a slightly higher voltage than what we want to go into the fan, once it's gone through the circuit, we can drop that down to the 12 volts and we're going to get this, the fan running at its maximum speed at the maximum setting of the dial. So... I'm going to uh, put a plug for this in the back so the old wire comes out and there's going to be a DC jack there and this plugs in in the same location. Figured that's probably the easiest, the hole's already there. We're going to come inside to the original switch as well because the, fit, the switch is there and it fits, no worries. And then I'm going to put a, uh, a speed control circuit and then I'll just drill a hole and put a, uh, a potenti potentiometer there with a, a dial on the front. You can ramp it up and ramp it down, have it nice and quiet, or you can ramp it up if you're doing some big soldering and you want to get the fumes away nice and quickly. So I'm going to have a little bit of a play with the uh, with the speed control. I'll get that nailed. I'll come back once I've got it figured out, and um, I'll let you know how I get on. Well, the improbable has happened. It looks like I've got it working. So right here I've got the uh, speed controller which is actually a, uh, a buck converter from eBay just an LM2596 based module uh, very common thing on eBay there usually it's got a, um, a trim pot sitting here but we've 
pull that out and put a uh, a pot there. And uh, we've got our DC jack, just where the old uh, power cable used to go in. I used a step drill to drill that out and stick that in there. just sits in there quite nicely. Comes over to the original switch, and then that switches power to the uh, buck converter and to the fan through the cable here. And then, of course, our fan spins. And then a, um, our speed is controlled by the pot, and uh, that replaces that trim pot, which is normally sitting just here. Now, there's a bit of a trick here because this fan is a 12-volt fan. It's not going to start spinning at 1 volt or lower or even a little bit higher. I actually tested this fan, and it starts spinning at about 3 volts. So if I uh, just put a, a potentiometer here, it's not going to work for part of the dial. They're going to be a dead spot. So we've got to do some calculations to figure out how to get the voltage to start at 3 volts at the lowest and then go up to 12 volts at the highest because and that's going to give me a little bit of overhead so that uh, the inefficiencies in the circuit means that I can always get that 12 volts coming out. So we've got to figure out how to um, limit the dial between 3 volts and 12 volts regardless of the um, the input and output voltages or the, sorry the input voltages. So how do we do that? Well the uh, the data sheet for the LM2596, if you type that into Google, you'll find the data sheet. Uh, the first result, for me at least, is a text instruments data sheet. And there's a, a formula there. So let's grab a whiteboard. And the formula is as follows. Pretty simple. You got two... Uh, before I start, we actually got two resistors to define the output voltage, R1 and R2. On the uh, the circuit board, the control board, uh, R1 is actually SMD, and that is a uh, 330 ohms in this case. So you need to know that. Uh, double check to make sure yours is whatever yours is. It may be 330 ohm, it may be something different. But the formula is R2, this is going to be the uh, variable resistor, equals... R1, and then we got uh, V out divided by V ref minus 1. So that's our formula. We know R1 is 330 ohms in this case. The V ref is always going to be 1.23. That's the internal voltage reference in the uh, actual chip. And our V out is the output voltage we want. So we want it to start about 3 or 4-ish volts. So let's say 3 volts, minus 1. And with the magic of a calculator, that comes to about 475 ohms. So if we have a variable resistor, or a potentiometer, and we turn that down to 475 ohms, we're going to get uh, 3 volts out. So we could change that to something else, 4 volts, 5 volts, but let's have another calculation because we need to know the highest voltage, 12 volts. So let's run this calculation again, uh, and we will put in 12 volts, and that will tell us the maximum, the maximum resistance we're going to need. At 12 volts, so we'll put uh, 3 volts here, at 12 volts, we're going to need 2889. 20, or let's round it up, 2890 ohms. So we've got to vary between about 475, maybe a little bit more. We can start at a higher voltage to make sure that the fan actually starts, because the, the 3 volts is a minimum voltage, so we want to make that a little bit higher, maybe 4 volts, just to ensure that the fan is going to, going to start every time, guaranteed. And we're going to go up to 890. So I used a uh, 2K pot, and then in series I put a uh, 820 ohm resistor and that's a common value so it's easy to get so basically what we're going to do we're going to replace the existing um, potentiometer which has got three holes in the circuit board and we're going to have a, a potentiometer with its three legs this is looking at the back of the potentiometer so the knob is on the other side we're going to join these two together actually I'll do this in a different color the wiring so we join the, the middle one and the left, that wire comes over to the middle here. Then on this side we come to the resistor and then that goes to the left hole. That one there is a 2K 
and an 820k. You do that with this similar setup. So if, if it doesn't matter what fan it is, um, as long as the minimum, the, it runs at the minimum voltage, which is about four volts with this setup. So uh, if we've got four volts and your fan starts at four volts and the maximum voltage is 12 volts, 2k potentiometer with an 820k resistor in line should work perfectly. And that's what I've done. And uh, it seems to work. So we'll put this aside. And that's exactly what I've done here. So I'll zoom in a little bit and I'll show you a close up of what I've got here. Okay, so, so you can see here we've got the uh, two holes which I've used the yellow and the green. The yellow comes around down to here and it's connecting the two uh, poles, the middle and the uh, left hand side. And then on the right hand side you can see there's a resistor just here. And that's got the green wire coming back over here just like I drew in the diagram. On the other side on the front, we got the dial there, nice little bezel there that has zero up to 100, so 0% to 100%. Zero is obviously going to be the slowest speed, up to 100 at the uh, high speed. So that's working quite well. I'll just demonstrate how it works in a sec, because there's one more step, and that is, if I just close that up, the fan's just going to rattle around inside, which is no good. So what I ended up doing was I went to the... Uh, the San Ace, the Sanyo Denki website, and um, they actually have 3D models in step format, which is a common uh, kind of interchange format for solid modeling, um, of all their fans. And I downloaded that, deleted all the fan blades and all that stuff out, took the, uh, the one plane that's the um, kind of like the surface of the uh, fan, extruded that in my 3D software, I use uh, Rhinoceros 3D, 3D printed it, and I came with this. I cut out the center there just to save a bit of plastic and print time. But that, you can see the three legs, the three legs here, the little uh, air guides, that sits on there like that. Now look, we've converted from a 25 to a 38 millimeter fan. All nice and aerodynamic, perfect. If you don't have a, um, a 3D printer, that's no worries, you can use other things like you could maybe use some foam, uh, some like spongy foam that's used for like around doors or to using gaps to stop drafts. Use some cardboard, a bit of plastic, even a bit of plastic wrapped around the fan um, would work well, and some standoffs. So you could put a standoff in the um, in the holes, bolt it in, uh, drill out where the uh, the little pegs here are, because these pegs go into these holes, so it all just slots to, slots together. Uh, drill those out and put some screws through. So when you close it. You put your normal screws through and there'll be four more just for the fan. And um, yeah, four pegs with a bit of plastic around the outside, just at the right height, would work perfectly. But I got access to a 3D printer, so I made that. And then that'll close up. Perfect. Not a problem at all. So I'm going to go ahead and um, reassemble this and we'll see how it works. Here we are. All done. Look at that. Nice twiddly dial and then the original on and off switch. So I've got this power supply. Turns out I don't need a very big one because it's only just a fan. So this is a, a 15 volt 0.8 amp which is more than enough. Nice and small and compact. So we'll plug that in over here and the power cable just plugs in the back just like that. Got a bit of power to it, that's alright. I'm going to turn it right down. So it's not that noisy anyway. But we can vary it however we want. Well that's all well and good. But how does it compare to the old fan? So, I was wondering that. So I've got the old fan here. Bit of a jury rig wiring. Let's plug it in and see. So if I bring that up to the mic, it's blowing into the mic, sideways, blowing away. 
of course, when it's on the bench, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's got a bit more of a rumble to it. And instead, there's going to be a lot more buffing noise because of the uh, airflow. That's not too bad at all. It's probably going to sound a bit different on the uh, microphone, but. The ability to turn it up and down is really, really good. Last test, how does it perform? With some uh, soldering smoke. Okay, so we got the old carpet burner here, pencil style soldering iron. And uh, let's see what it looks like without the fan on. So we got smoke going everywhere, right up into your face. And then if we turn it on, hopefully this is not a complete waste of time, because if it is, I could have spent that time playing video games or something more constructive. So, what does it say? Oh, beautiful. Go straight in there from quite a distance away too. A little bit far away there, but look at that straight in. See if it works if I tilt it back a bit. Yeah. That's good. That's real good. I like that. Of course, if we turn it down, it's going to be a bit less effective, but also a bit less noisy. Still working not too bad. Yep, that's good. I like that. I like that a lot. Awesome. All right. Well, that's pretty much it done. We've got our uh, DC input. We've got our dial on the front and the standard on and off switch. All good. And it seems to work quite well. Now these aren't going to filter as perfectly as something like a, uh, a larger unit with the, uh, the ducted pipes and that. It's only a single filter so it does get rid of some of the, uh, the fumes. But a lot of it gets blown out the back. So um, it's good to keep that angled away from you. It's just a way to keep it the smoke from coming into your face mostly. Um, if you were to have a window open, you can point this towards the window. This back panel comes off four screws. So I could just have that pointing out towards the window, and it'll be fine. But, yep, I'm going to call that a win. Two thumbs up. It's working quite well, and I'm happy with that. So that, I'm going to call it quits there. We'll um, cut the video. So, guys, don't forget, we got that Patreon. Keep watching our videos. And as always, we'll see you next time.